out on the flight from 8 p.m. to 11 a.m. the next day. See, Is that just that's going to be bad news for you because as soon as we land in Rome, I'm going to be making you do stuff and then you're going to be exhausted. So you better choose your, your sleep wisely. I'm not going <laughs> to like that. We had to qu take a quick detour to Civita Vecchia, the port of Rome, to check into our cruise that we will be leaving on in a couple days. Threw some things into an overnight bag, got to the train station, and set out to Rome. Finally. Spade? There you go. There you go. I'll say I'm, I'm validated. <laughs> Navigating uh, public transportation in other countries is always a little bit of an adventure. Made it from the train, now we're waiting for a bus. The whole, it's a whole odyssey. Look at there eventually. <laughs> After a true journey of planes, trains, and automobiles, we made it to the historic city center of Rome to check into our hotel room, which was conveniently right around the corner from the Trevi Fountain and such a good affordable find. All right, in our little guest house, let's see what our room looks like. It's a self-check-in situation, apparently. Okay. <sighs> we made it to Rome. That was a commitment. Very small little room, but very high ceilings. Tray chic. Love. <laughs> Great view. Killer view. It's just a wall. But yeah. I like the I like the curtains, uh, the fake curtains to make it seem like there might be a window there. Very small, but cute bathroom. We made it successfully from Los Angeles to the port of Sita. Uh, I cannot pronounce the port here, but made it there. Checked in on our cruise ship. However, we are not leaving for another. Uh, day. So the port in Rome, or this word right here, which I have yet to be able to pronounce, um, is pretty far away from Rome. So to really get the most out of our time here, we decided to get a room for the night right around the corner from the Trevi Fountain so that we can see more of the city and not have to like schlep back and forth on the train and the buses and all that. So it's Palazzetto Trevi. It's pretty cute. And uh, we're just gonna drop off our bags and try to enjoy our little bit less than 24 hours that we have here in Rome. My third time here, so I'm gonna try to find some fun things to do that want to see my three days in Rome guide. I will put a link to that in the description box. Um, we covered like all the, the normal bases and then some other fun, interesting things. So check that one out after this video. Let's go out and check out Rome at Christmas time. Our first order of business, go out and get a spritz and get our bearings. <laughs> Yes, if you can ever visit Rome during Christmas time, definitely do it. They make it so festive, they really do it up with all the decor. 
Minus three girls plus a husband. At this point, it's just an Aisha and Jess trip. We've been on way too many trips together. We have now become a new segment of the Babes That Wonder. <laughs> order of business dinner at one of our old faves we did have to wait for a little bit but it's always worth it <laughs> so you think i'd be a good vespa driver of course oh Jess thanks. navigates us she's going to go multiple trips Jess has always got us where we need to be never had issues never had issues i trust her with part of my life i would never drive a vespa in rome that's way too crazy If you're looking for a delicious, affordable lunch or dinner that's relatively fast, so good, did I mention, come to Pani Salame. So we love this place so much, we came back years later. <laughs> so good. Meat and cheese board is still so massive, I forgot. <laughs> Their menu consists of very generous meat and cheese boards, just like this one, as well as plenty of choices in really delicious Italian sandwiches, which we had them cut into threes for us so that we could try a little bit of each. And because we just couldn't resist the smell of Benchy ice cream wafting through the doors, we went in for a cone of gelato. Despite the chilly weather, all of their flavors are so, so good. You really have to come try this place, whether it's for gelato or getting some of their famous chocolate as well. I'm eating my hair. All night, I've been making fun of all these people walking by with gelato and it's cold. It was so good. But you know what? I'm one of those people now. It's kind of worth it. <laughs> so this is the Pantheon. We came here last time. One of my favorite little places to come see in Rome. It's closed right now, of course, because it's nighttime, but it's really pretty to see lit up at night. We made it to the Christmas market. Apparently to say Merry Christmas in Italian is a Buon Natale. Buon Natale. <laughs> I got my Christmas ornament, which was my goal. And uh, we're gonna go ride this, this carousel. <laughs> because why not, when in Rome? And Nate ditched us, so we're just gonna be children now. <laughs> Jesus in the manger? I don't even know if that was a manger. <laughs> was it a nativity? I thought it was just something about Rome. That was a nativity scene. It did not look like a nativity scene. I'll go back and show you. That's where Mary and Joseph are. Okay. There's no baby Jesus. If they were angels, this isn't, this isn't accurate. Well, of course it's not accurate. I'm calling something. <laughs> I'm out what I'm calling it. <laughs> they don't put any Jesuses in the, in the mangers apparently like in the catholic churches here because like they don't do it till christmas day because that's when he was born lord. So, <laughs> lord that's what i have to say about that so we might see a lot more nativity scenes with no baby jesus on our trip because they don't put him there till december 25th i, would, oh. I just want to know whose job it is to go around and put this baby jesus there on christmas day whose job is that <laughs> somebody <laughs> Thank you. 
It is 10.30 at night and it's still this busy here. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> Good morning. I don't know if you can hear me over the roar of the fountain, but Aisha and I woke up bright and early to come out to the Trevi Fountain to do a little photo shoot. We both got a little bit extra. This, is it a trip to Europe if you don't have an early morning extra photo shoot? I don't think so. If you want to come to the Trevi Fountain and have basically no one in your photo, here's the thing. Just like I said in my last Rome video, we went to Spanish Steps. You have to wake up at the crack of dawn and you have to get there before sunrise. We're talking 7 a.m. It's now 7.35 and it's still actually not too bad out here, but we got here right at 7 and there was a little bit less people, um, so we were able to get some epic shots. So yeah, you gotta sacrifice a little bit of Z's, but if you do it the first morning of your trip, most likely you're still a little bit jet lagged. I definitely was, so it makes it a little bit easier to wake up. And now we're awake and we're ready to get the rest of our day here in Rome started. You don't have to be traveling with your friend who's great with a camera you can hire a local photographer to shoot you for as low as $35 I'll put some links in the description box for some experiences that you can book for this also don't forget to throw a coin over your left shoulder to bring you good luck and ensure you come back to Rome someday having breakfast at this little cafe that's right across the way from the Trevi Fountain and apparently we came at just the right time because they just cleared everybody out of there. Looks like they're cleaning it or something, so... So good timing on us, Aisha. Great. <laughs> that's rich. One, that's a one bite and done for me. But it's good. and we got here just in time for the opening of the Galleria de Pompili. I think I'm saying that right. This was a home of a very noble, wealthy family in Rome, and it's still privately owned by the same family, and it's a private uh, art collection, which you can come and take a tour of this beautiful home and check out all of the art that they have. It's 10 euros per adult ticket, and I believe it's open seven days a week. Uh, it opens at 9 a.m. on the weekdays, so if you get here, um, might not be anybody else here. We're the first ones in, and I don't really didn't really see anyone coming behind us. Uh, this is kind of like one of those little hidden gems that not everybody uh, checks out when they're in Rome, but I think it's definitely worth it. The large collection of paintings, furniture, and statuary has been assembled since the 16th century by the Doria, Pamphili, Landi, and Alborandini families, now united through marriage and descent under the simplified surname Doria Pamphili. The palazzo has grown over the centuries and it's likely the largest in Rome still in private ownership. Side, kind of and there's literally nobody here this is so stunning even have a little cafe which wasn't quite open yet on our visit but you can come here for lunch or a pair TiVo well we're in the area so 
thought we'd pop into the Pantheon. There's no line. Last time we came here, it was in the summertime, and there was quite a bit of a line, but it did move pretty fast. But no line is better than a line, so perks of going in the wintertime. You can purchase your tickets to enter at these new kiosks, or you can buy them online via the QR codes they provide. The Pantheon is definitely a site that you have to see when you're in Rome. It was built 2,000 years ago, and it's still the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome. The dome is a perfect hemisphere, and you could be able to fit a sphere inside the structure with a diameter of 44.4 meters, which would touch the ceiling, floor, and walls. The building is perfect, and thus its construction is a bit of a mystery. This used to be a Roman temple, and then since what year AD they turned it into a church? Uh, 126. Well, Hadrian turned it into a church in 126 AD. No, Hadrian was the one who ordered the temple. That's to what I meant to say. And then later. It got turned into a church. Don't mind me. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. They have a little nativity scene up here for Christmas, but as per usual, there's no baby Jesus in it yet because like we discussed last night, they don't do that until Christmas day. When you're in here, if you're around like the more peripheral of the room, you'll notice that the floor like slopes downward and it's because there's a hole in the ceiling. And when they built the temple, they did that on purpose so that when it rained, the water would kind of run out of the room. Pretty cool. The Sardinian king who united all the sub-kingdoms of Italy is also buried here along with the painter Raphael. Popped over to the Colosseum for a couple minutes just to grab some photos outside of it. If you come up here, up these stairs from the Colosseum level, uh, there's like a bunch of different ledges where you can get great shots with the Colosseum right behind you. You just might have to wait your turn because people have caught on to this, but we did this several years ago and it's the best photo spot that I know of to get the Colosseum uh, with nobody behind you. The line actually doesn't look too bad today for the Colosseum, but when we came in the summertime, it was absolute insanity, but I would recommend no matter what to get a skip the line ticket in advance. Um, so that you don't have to wait in line or risk waiting in line. Um, I'll put a, one, a link to one in the description box that we used last time, which was awesome. It also included a ticket to the Roy Roman Forum that you got to go and walk through after you walk through the Colosseum. So whenever possible in Rome, skip the line. That's my number one tip. After you check out the Colosseum, it's a super easy walk over to the Roman Forum. While you do need a ticket to go into the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill, you can get a glimpse of them from above on the street. And this is just all we really had time for today, but definitely check this out if you're in a time crunch like we are. And if you keep walking, you will get right up to this huge monument. It's called the Altar of the Fatherland, and it is a monument to the king who united all of the sub-kingdoms of Italy into one nation. We happened to get there right during the changing of the guard, which was pretty cool. You really cannot beat the views of the city of Rome from up here, and it is free to enter, which is really cool. I also just think the architecture and the sheer size of this monument is something incredible to take in, and it's awesome to do it up close. You can also decide if you'd like to buy a ticket to go up this elevator to go to the very top of the monument, but we did not do this because, again, we didn't have too much time, and it was around 15 euros a person, which we just didn't really feel the need to pay. Our time in Rome was running out, so we decided to head back to the area where our hotel was because our bags needed to be picked up, and we definitely were hungry and in need of some delicious Roman fare before we set off on our next destination on our Windstar cruise. I get that this video has been very Trevi Fountain heavy, and it's always pretty busy here, but if you want to see it from above, you can actually come up to the Trevi rooftop bar, which is just down the corner from the fountain. You can see the position there, 
and you can grab some drinks and some food up here. It is a little pricey. So we decided to go down to this little bar, which was literally next door to the stairs to the rooftop bar. And this place was amazing. We got some aperitivo. The staff was so friendly and we ordered some food and some Aperol spritzes and they didn't charge us for the food. I don't know if that's a normal thing here or if this is like the aperitivo thing, but this is definitely the best aperitivo food I've ever had in any of my travels in Italy. It's not like a hot pizza that I thought it was going to be. That's good. Damn good. Delicious. Definitely try some sweets. They had so many yummy pastries and cannolis and all kinds of things that looked so good that I unfortunately did not save room for. We are headed back to the ship. It's been really fun. A little bit less than 24 hours here in Rome. Uh, that last little restaurant we went to was amazing. If y'all are near the Trevi Fountain, I think that is the best, least touristy place that you could go. The staff is really fun and uh, we had a really great time there. So hope you all enjoyed this vlog. Thanks so much for following along. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of our port stops on our winter Mediterranean cruise and see you on the next one. Bye!